Hello and welcome back to Data News of the Week, the video where we go for all the little bibs and blobs of stories that involve data that we can squeeze into any other video. Once again, we are doing this kind of in-screen format and you guys have got to be looking up there, but there's lots to get through, so let's get straight on to it. For those of you that aren't aware, earlier this week, TerraMaster was hit by ransomware. We've already talked about it, as you can see there on screen on the blog. If we go into the article a little bit, the number of people that were hit by this were greeted by the same dead bolt splash screen that is to say they've tried to log in and their index screen is displaying this the warning that basically says you can't get to your data we've encrypted it and you have to send us this much money and we will give you the key to get it back now this first kind of came about a few days ago it has developed quite significantly in the last two to three days and a few things have come up from it i was originally going to make a dedicated video on this but i thought the article already kind of covered it quite a lot and i wanted to kind of wait until more information was readily available. TerraMaster kind of contacted as many people as possible on this pretty quickly to their credit. Um, and although um, when we talked about this with Asus or NAS a little, uh, about a week, week and a half ago, uh, depending on when this video goes out, one of the biggest things that we learned from that attack was that when this Terra uh, when a NAS gets hit by Deadbolt, when you see this splash screen, that doesn't mean the encryption has completed. And generally, that is the start of things to stop the user getting in, to kind of confuse, befuddle them. And then the encryption, which is already a very heavy process, is slowly going on. So lots of users um, were able to power down their systems safely this time around and only have a smaller percentage of their data. And that doesn't count for everyone. Of course, there are people that woke up in the morning and suddenly all of their data was encrypted. Um, but the reason I'm saying all of this is because uh, the firmware patch from TerraMaster was issued less than a day later that allowed you to remove Act, uh, kind of remove that splash screen there and kind of check out and see how much of your data got encrypted by this attack hopefully you all had backups in order although it is worth highlighting as i do say in my article that if you do um up install this update it will remove the black um the deadbolt black screen there that allows you to kind of enter that ransom i'm not endorsing paying hackers like this i'm really not but at the same time some people will look at how much they have to pay against how much they're going to lose and it becomes a viable option now uh, another development on this in the last day or so the people that worked on uh, the recovery method for when QLocker hit uh, QNAP systems uh, they were able to utilize PhotoRec and other applications um, and via a Linux uh, uh, portal to kind of revert a lot of those files back to their pre-encryption state now from what I understand this process is being worked on as we speak and right now there's a few updates in the bleeping computer forum again all the links for today's stuff is linked in the description below but ultimately they're stating how it's gonna they're working on and they're getting very close to a tutorial much like they did with QLocker that allows you via a Windows PC you will have to get another piece of storage to send the recovered files to but they're working on a detailed guide for users to try to get their data recovered again not completed yet it's not foolproof but still nonetheless I think a lot of people that have been hit by Deadbolt and again QNAP, Asus or TerraMaster whatever are going to be quite pleased to know that um, a way of getting that data back is kind of going to be possible hopefully soon next up onto the subject of big data and wd finally dropped their 20tb nas drive the wd red pro 20tb was kind of unceremoniously dropped on their website it was one of the quietest releases for a large-scale hard drive i've seen for a long time if you look around it hasn't been reported on a lot of websites yet here it is on their own website there even with a price on board as well at 703.99 which again is tremendous a huge price there but at the same time it's 20 terabytes there now again this is a pro series drive we've already covered it on the article a bit of self-promotion there um we'll be going to a lot more detail about the hardware specifications it's a 7200 it's a pro series drive but it's also taken advantage of that OptiNand that we've talked about in previous data news of the week videos when we were talking about how WD were going to crack 20 and larger capacities there with an area of NAND storage on board that took care of metadata and any data that kind of stuff to allow much faster actions 
and uh, basically response time and lower latency on this drive in utilization now again most of the standard stuff that we talked about before from wd red pro drives there so again you're talking your five-year warranty you're talking larger scale uh, nas and data center deployment there again it's it's slightly um lower in some specifications than say their ultra style series but again this is largely away from intense 24 7 use and just larger 24 sporadic uh, 24 uh, bays or so maximum kind of 24 7 but not um sustained use kind of random activity there and all the specifications are available right now on wd's own website so as i say it's a very quiet release from them and i kind of assumed normally in every other capacity they've released when they were hitting the 14 the 16 the 18 tiers they were a lot noisier about this so this is a very quiet release from them that i think a lot of people may not even be aware has suddenly become available Next up, a brand new QNAP rack mount has hit the market. Another entry into the 64 series from QNAP, their big uh, 2022 series of NAS devices there. This is an SMB rack mount that's using very similar architecture to what we've seen so far in the 64 series there. Available in um, 4, 8 and 12 bay models with redundant and non-redundant power supply versions out there. It is pretty much the next step up from that existing 53du series of rack mounts there and again even just a quick look at those specifications shows us that it's still taking advantage of that intel based uh, n5000 based processor there again it's got two times 2.5 gbe ports on board there it arrives with four gig of memory going all the way up to 16 across two slots it's got m2 ssd slots on board it's got a pcie upgrade slot on board usb 3.2 gen 2 and again it's going to be priced very similarly to what we've seen already on the uh, rack mount kind of smb series in the previous b and d generations which again for a lot of you is going to be very very impressive also you can utilize wd and seagate hard drives i know that's a hot topic at the moment for a lot of users i'm sorry if you're getting background noise from a nas i've got just off camera there i apologize um but again this is kind of their in, uh, newest entry into this marketplace here and again with um updates recently to qts and qts version 5 this is a system that's going to pretty much run all of that. It's still a Celeron-based quad-core processor there, but it's still, you know, for an SMB solution or even prosumer solution, this is quite a well-kitted-out system. And having that option of 2.5 GBE PCIe upgrade slot for your network interface upgrades and M2 SSD slots and those storage bays there on the front, that's a lot of flexibility there for a lot of users to get behind and take advantage of. And another thing, while I'm onto the subject of QNAP, do bear in mind, we will be doing a Q&A uh, with QNAP at the end of this month. So I need your questions. Again, be as thorough as you like. We've already got some questions coming through on YouTube there. We've already got on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other platforms as well. So again, we're correlating all of those questions and the most common questions or the most interesting questions will of course make it into the Q&A with QNAP UK. So do stay tuned for that and lastly for those of you that have been keeping an eye on the russia ukraine situation right now and again situation is kind of an understatement for what is a whole scale invasion again i know there's a lot of opinions about this i'm not going to kind of take a stand on this but i am going to say i am incredibly impressed and entertained by what's going on with anonymous right now for those that aren't aware the full scope of it is just impressive just the cyber um kind of um, attacks that are happening from anonymous onto the russian base there in order to kind of um break apart a lot of the military structure there and a lot of stuff that's going on with propaganda but everything from them um, as you see they're interfering and accessing and shutting down access to the russian uh, space agency vehicle monitoring systems then on their tvs there a lot of the propaganda on russian's own state tv uh, is being changed so that when people are trying to access this they're seeing a lot of stuff for what's going on in the ukraine right now and not the arguably more glossed changed version um that some might say they're probably being shown then you've got over 1500 websites uh, from governments to banks um, companies um media outlets all being shut down and ones that have got particularly um again perspective here i'm trying to be as fair as possible even though deep down i think this is awful um the idea that there's a lot of this bias that's being pushed out there i think a lot of that is being kind of shown in a way that it should be then a lot of the banking websites have been shut down there i know a lot of money going in and out of the country there 
it's nice that that sort of stuff is being monitored at the very least shared. Uh, then you've got the boat, uh, Putin's own 97 million uh, yacht uh, there has had its name changed and its location changed. Again, I'd love to say a lot of those details. And for me, it's just hilarious for the most part. Um, and then on top of that, you've got things like um, outside of the boat uh, hacking there. Uh, a lot of people are already saying that uh, the databases of the government agencies and a lot of the military plans um, have been accessed and leaked by the anonymous group. Uh, so again, showing just how far back a lot of this invasion uh, has been planned for quite a, a great deal of time and recommendations on if you want to spread, you know, try to uh, contact people in Russia and if you want to put your point across, ultimately saying, you know, that maybe you're not getting the full story over there. Um, lots of ways in which people are recommended along with putting reviews uh, on certain restaurants there using the Google system, a lot of the other websites out there. I know Google has got a bit funny with that now and started limiting people putting that information on reviews. They're sort of stating, that obviously, this is not the intended platform for that. But again, there's pros and cons. Um, but yeah, there you go. Uh, this has been Data News of the Week. Again, I am going to keep an eye on all of this stuff with um, cyber security right now, as far as Russia and Ukraine, because I do think this is a subject that's going to be not covered a great deal in the media so although i'm not going to make a pain of it by including this every week i do think this is an interesting enough subject that we should include it at least once every couple of weeks at the very least here on data news of the week but otherwise thank you so much for watching click subscribe if you want to stay abreast of data news and of course visit nas compares for more information on new solutions new software new hardware and more over there on nas compares i will see you next week